This is going to be a study on the subject of the spirit, the soul, and the body. Because the Bible makes a distinction between the spirit and the soul and the body. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23 it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see there how Paul made a distinction between the spirit and the soul and the body. A lot of people think the spirit and the soul are the same, but they're different. And then you have a verse like Hebrews 4.12, which says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There you have the soul, the spirit, and the body, the, which is the joints and marrow. So you see a distinction again. So you know, God made man in his image. And God is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So he's a tripart being, we're a tripart being. In Genesis 2-7, it's very interesting verse. It says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. There's our body. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. There's your spirit, and man became a living soul. There's your soul. So you see, the Bible clearly teaches spirit, soul, and body. And then think about the human soul of Jesus. It went into the heart of the earth. In Luke 23, 42 through 43, you see something. It says... Talking about the dying thief, it says, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's, Jesus said that when he was dying on the cross. And that day his soul was going into the heart of the earth. So this human soul of Jesus went into the heart of the earth. Then you see the spirit of Jesus went back to the Father. In Luke 23, 46, it says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Then you have the body of Jesus. Where did it go? It went to the ground. It was buried. In Luke 23, 52 through 53, it says, This man went into Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. So there you have the spirit, soul, and body of the Lord Jesus. His soul went to paradise. His spirit went to the Father, and the body went to the grave. So, with that short introduction, let's look at each one of these. The body. Let's first look at the body. This is the part that everybody sees. It's what you see in the mirror. You've never seen the real you. Nobody's ever seen the real me. You've only seen my body, you see. And it says in John 1.18, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So Jesus said, no man hath seen God at any time. But then in John 14, 9, he said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? So is that a contradiction? Because in John 1, 18, it says, No man has seen God at any time. But in John 14, 9, he says, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. It's not a contradiction at all. Because no man has seen the soul. No man has seen God at any time. No man's seen the Father who would represent the soul. But when he says, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father... He's talking about the body. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. The closest you get to seeing the real person is when you look into their eyes. Nobody's seen God's soul. 
but they saw his body, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke eleven thirty four, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy whole body also is full of darkness. The closest you get to seeing the real person is when you look into the eyes. The light of the body is the eye. The body is doomed to die because it's corrupted by sin. And bodily exercise profiteth little. I mean, it's doomed to die. The soul should be your primary concern. Hebrews 9.27 says, And that is it, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. When the body dies, it goes back to the dust. In Genesis 3.19 it says, In the sweat of thy face, this is the Lord talking to Adam after the fall, and it says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return again unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So, the body is against the spirit of a saved person. If you're saved, then your body is against your spirit. The new man in you wants to do right. The old man, your flesh, wants to do wrong. The body, the flesh, wants to sleep in. It wants to overeat. It wants to do all unrighteous things. It wants to go against the Bible. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So why do you struggle with sin? Why do you want to do uh, that certain pet sin, but then there's something in you saying, don't do that, that's not right. You got this battle going on inside that kind of torments you. It's because your body is contrary to the spirit. Your flesh lusteth against the spirit. And this is going to be a problem until the rapture. The body does not get redeemed until the rapture. You don't get your glorified body until the rapture. That's your glorification. It says in Romans 8, 23, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, that it, the redemption of our body. So waiting for the adoption, to wit, or that's saying, that is to say, the redemption of our body. So that's what we're waiting for. That way, when we get that new body, we're not going to have to worry about sin anymore. Our flesh won't lust against the Spirit. Our flesh is also going to be sinless when we get that glorified body. But that's the body. Now let's see what the Bible says about the soul. The soul leaves the body at death. In Genesis thirty-five eighteen, it says, And it came to pass as her, her soul was in departing. So you see, the soul is the real you. And the soul departs the body at death. The body is just clothes for the soul. The soul has a bodily form, but you can't see it. At death, a lost person's soul goes to hell, not his body. But the soul is shaped like the body. Uh, the soul doesn't stay behind in haunt houses. It either goes to heaven or it goes to hell. In Luke 16, 22 through 28, I can't think of a better example. It says in Luke 16, 22, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So the rich man's body is in the ground. It was buried. But look at the next verse. And in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments. That's his soul. The soul has eyes. The soul feels torment. It has a bodily shape. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So the soul can see. And it says in verse 24, And he cried. The soul can cry. Father Abraham, have mercy on me. So he feels pain. The soul feels pain. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. So a soul has a tongue. It gets thirsty. He says, for I am tormented 
in this flame. It fills the flames of hell. But Abraham said, Son, remember, the soul has a memory, that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So Lazarus' soul is feeling torment or feeling comfort. The rich man is feeling torment. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house, so the soul can have feelings towards others. So he says, For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. You see, many people have their limbs amputated, but something strange is they can still feel an itch or pain where their limb used to be. It could be the soul. They call this phantom itching. When you have your limbs amputated, you know, you don't have an arm there. Still, you're, somebody might get an itch where their arm used to be. Isn't that strange? Is it the soul? The soul can wear clothes. In Revelation 6, 9 through 11, it says, When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were should be fulfilled so these souls can wear clothes they were given white robes now and the soul gets corrupted by sin in Micah 6 7 it says will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil shall I give my firstborn for my transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul so the soul gets corrupted by sin. So the soul has to be saved. The body will be saved at the rapture, but the soul will get saved now. If you come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on him and what he did for you on the cross, he died on the cross for your sins, shed his blood, he was buried and resurrected. If you believe on him, your soul will be saved. Hebrews 10.39 says, But we are not of them which draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Your soul needs to be saved because it, it gets corrupted by sin. At death, a saved person's soul goes to heaven, but the body goes to the grave. So loved ones aren't in the grave. You can go to the graveyard to remember your, you know, your spouse, your family member, your friend. That's passed on, but they're not in the grave. They can't hear you. Their soul is either in heaven or it's in hell. In 2 Corinthians 5, 8, it says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So if you're absent from the body, you've got a spirit, a soul, and a body. If you're absent from the body, your soul departed. And if you're saved, it's present with the Lord. At the moment you were saved, the body was cut loose from the soul and baptized into the body of Christ. And that's why your sins aren't applied to you anymore after you're saved. That's why you can't lose your salvation. Any sin that you committed after you were saved, it didn't get applied to your soul because the soul was cut loose from the body. And your sins have to do with your flesh. It says in Colossians 2.11, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So you see, God performed an operation on you when you first got saved. He cut your soul loose from your flesh. Before you were saved, each time you sinned, those, soul, those sins corrupted your soul. Now that you're saved, your soul's washed in the blood of Jesus, and the sins you commit in the flesh are not applied to the soul. And you are baptized into the body of Christ. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we bond or free, 
and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what happens at salvation. And your soul sealed by the Holy Spirit. And nothing can break the seal. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So that's the soul. Now let's look at the spirit. The spirit is like wind or air. In John 3.8 it says, The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So the wind is like, or the Spirit is like wind or air. God put Spirit in man when he blew into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And that made him become a living soul. At death the Spirit goes back to God. And this is true for saved and lost people. Now, the lost man's soul goes to hell, but his spirit goes back to God. It doesn't hang around in hot houses. Ecclesiastes 12, 7 says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That's saved and lost people. So, a person's spirit doesn't hang around, and a person's soul doesn't hang around. There's no such thing as houses haunted by spirits of the dead. Uh, psychics can't talk to spirits of the dead. They're just talking to Satan's ministers. Because in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The people that talk to the dead or the haunted houses, this has to do with unclean spirits posing as dead people. It's not actual dead people because they're either in heaven or they're in hell. The spirit has to be regenerated because it is dead in trespasses and sins. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they died spiritually that day. It says in Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And we know that they lived to be 900 plus years old, so this would have to be a spiritual death that they died that day. And ever since then, when a man realizes he is a guilty sinner and he's sinned against god he's dead spiritually so he must be born again and that's the only way you're going to get to heaven is to be born again you have a body you have a soul and you have a spirit the body's going to go to the grave when you die the soul's going to go to heaven or hell so if you're not saved you need to make sure you're saved and as i said the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ died on the cross, paying for your sins, so that you wouldn't have to pay for your sins in hell. All you got to do is accept the payment. So if you come to Jesus Christ right now, and, re and believe on Him to be your Savior, your soul will be saved. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's simple as that. So come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are today and trust in Him before it's too late.